Good morning. It is Wednesday, December 20th, 2023, about 3 a.m. I guess the Lord's getting me get back to my, closer to my normal time when he gets me up. But wow, the Lord is just releasing so much and so much is coming together, understanding. And so um, I'm going to release a lot here, but I think it's going to bring a picture that an understanding so that we can walk in a much more resolute and clearly understanding what we are after and what we need to do to come into union with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so I'm going to open with prayer. Father, I just thank you for bringing us full circle back to you. Union with you, Holy Spirit and Son. Jesus, I thank you through your blood that our sins were removed as far as the east is from the west. May we behold the new. May we behold what you behold. What you create us for in your righteousness. And Holy Spirit, I just thank you for leading us into all truth. The truth which is in Jesus. That we put off concerning the former conduct, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of our mind and that we put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and holiness from the truth. Your very image and likeness restored. So I thank you for clarity of thought and mind. I thank you for your word going forth and running swiftly. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm just going to flow off of where he had me on my bed and which is out of Psalm 19. A Psalm of David where it says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament show his handiwork. Day unto day utter his speech. Night unto night showeth forth knowledge. What's the day unto day showing forth speech? During the day, what do we see? We see the sun. The sun is, is lighting upon us. The, sh the sun is warming us. His love. But, but the sun also, the new day after day, the sun speaks of his mercies are new every day. Jesus said in, in Luke chapter 6 that he causes the sun to rise upon the evil and the good. He sendeth forth rain upon the just and the unjust. His mercies are new every day. His forgiveness, his first love. The heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament show his handiwork. Day unto day utter a speech. You are loved. Night unto night showeth forth knowledge. His redemptive plan from the before the foundation of the world. Before he created, as he created it, the redemptive plan was in heaven. Night unto night showeth forth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their lines go throughout all the earth. Speaking of inheritance lines, allotting lines. The earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. The world made therein, bringing forth his inheritance back to him. 
and our inheritance in him. Their lines go throughout all the earth and their words unto the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. In them, speaking of the, the Maseroth, the zodiac, the signs of the zodiac in the heaven, which is his redemptive plan for mankind. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is the sun, Jesus, is representative in the sun. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom, there he is, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. That word in the Hebrew translated chamber is the Hebrew word huppa. C-H-U-P-P-A-H. It is the bridal chamber. The bride coming. The, the huppah is in the father's house. When the bridegroom espouses, when the bridegroom proposes or 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 chooses his bride before he comes and gets her. He goes and prepares a place for her in the Father's house and prepares this place, this chuppah, this marriage canopy, the marriage bed. And you see, in this in the in the zodiac, in the Maseroth, is this redemptive plan. And here, the sun is here, and he's coming out of his chamber, the bridal chamber. The redemptive plan being completed in in that he's he's brought forth a bride. Not yet full circle, but there are those that have come full circle, right? Now they're going to bring the rest of creation into that. Which is the bridegroom coming out of his chamber, rejoiceth as a strong man. Why is he rejoicing? He just consummated with his bride. He just entered into union with her. She entered into union with him. Which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. Let's finish this deal. <laughs> his going forth is from the ends of heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. What's it saying? He's fulfilling that whole redemptive plan in the Maseroth that's shown in the Zodiac. This going forth is from the ends of heaven and a circuit unto the ends of it. Nothing is hid from the heat thereof, the heat of this love. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimonies of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing. The heart. Okay, so there's a revelation I need to release here. The can't commandments, the testimonies, and the statutes. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's what each of them are speaking. It's the whole I am. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The law of the Lord is perfect. That's the Father sending forth the word. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimonies of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. That's Holy Spirit. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. That's the Son. 
The commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening the eyes. That's Father. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. That's the Son. The judgments of the Lord. That's Holy Spirit. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. What does it say of, what did Jesus say of Holy Spirit? When he has come, he will convict or reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to the Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired than gold, yea, than much fine gold. They are sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. And in keeping them there is great reward. Who can know his error? Cleanse thou me from my secret faults. And keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. This word translated presumptuous is used, I believe, 13 times. 12 of those times, it's pride, prideful. Only this one time is it translated presumptuous. So it's all about pride. Keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and shall be innocent from the great transgression. What's the great transgression? It's to break the great commandment. What is the great commandment? Jesus said the great commandment, to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's why it's in three. That's why it's the commandments, the testimonies, the statutes. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Innocent from the great transgression to love the Lord thy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then shall I be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. What is acceptable in his sight? There's only one thing that's acceptable in his sight, the Son. So these words of his mouth and the meditation of his heart are a meditation on the Son. It's coming into sonship. It's not just any words. It's not just any meditation. It's, it's this which completes the redemptive plan. It's this which brings us into oneness with I am. As Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. I am Jesus, Holy Spirit, Father. Outer court, inner court, holy of holies. I am the way, the way of righteousness at the cross. Enter into sonship. The truth, Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the life. This is eternal life that you may know him, the one true God. And Jesus Christ, him thou hast sent. You know, in the garden, we didn't just lose, lose relationship with the Father. We lost relationship with Holy Spirit. 
and we re- lost relationship with the son. That's why there was three temptations in three realms. In the realm of spirit, in the realm of soul, and the realm of body. Jesus is the word made flesh in the body. Of course, Holy Spirit and Father is in the realm of the soul. This is why Jesus was tempted in all three of these areas. Lust of the eyes, the realm of the spirit. Lust of the flesh, the realm of the body. The pride of life, the realm of the soul. The soul lifted up within itself. All three of those realms, all three of those fallings, let's call it, (laughs) when you fall into them, right? Separates you from Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is why I'm trying, I'm painting this bigger picture of Psalm 19. The law, the statutes, the command, the testimonies, the statutes. It's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The great transgression is to break the great commandment to love the Lord thy God, Yahweh, I am. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And that's in the context of him giving the commandments, the statutes, the testimonies, and the statutes. Father, Holy Spirit, Son. In Jeremiah chapter 616 it says, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. What's he talking about? Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways. Where you're walking with the Son, you're walking with Holy Spirit, and you're walking with Father. This is the good way. Stand ye in the ways. Why does he say stand ye in the ways? Look at Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 31. I'll begin verse 30. Go say to them, get ye into your tents again. But as for thee, stand thou here by me, and I will speak unto thee all the commandments and the statutes, and the judgments, the ways of the Lord, righteousness, holiness, and peace, the ways of the Lord in relationship with Father, Holy Spirit, and Son. It's all in the context of the Shema of Israel. Deuteronomy 6.4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, he is one. That word Lord is the tetragrammaton. yod He vah He. Yahweh, I am. I am one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Father, I will that those that you give me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. We are one. John 17, Father, that they may be one, even as we are one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in you, through the Holy Spirit, that they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you have sent me, and the glory which you have given me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them and thou in me through Holy Spirit, that they may be perfect in one, that the world may know 
that you have sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Holy Spirit is not in it. <laughs> He is a person. He is part of the Godhead. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of the life are those which separate us from those ways with walking with each of them in union and in intimacy. The journey begins at the way of righteousness. Stepping into sonship through Jesus Christ. At the brazen altar, at the cross, where our sin is moved as far as the east is from the west. We enter into the new creation reality where we we're, we're cleanse our hands we wash our hands in innocency at the brazen laver and look into that reflecting pool and begin to see who we are. And we enter into the holy place where the lampstand represent the revelation of Holy Spirit. We've entered into the way of holiness, walking with Holy Spirit. And then into the holiest of all, where we walk with Father. Before the Ark of the Covenant, where his voice, as it says in Exodus, spoke to Moses out from the mercy seat, this throne of mercy. When we abide in the mercy at the cross to come into this sonship where the old has been put away and we receive Holy Spirit and walk in the light of that truth, mercy and truth meet at the Ark of the Covenant under the cherubim's wings. This is the hoppa, the marriage canopy, where we've come into, where we come into union in the Father's house. And we've, he's brought us all the way back to the Father's house. And fellowship with Son, Spirit, the Father. As 1 John chapter 5, I think it's verse 7 says or so, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. Of course, Jesus is called the Word in heaven. There are three that bear record in heaven. These three are one, the I Am. Now, this isn't in the NIV. The NIV pulls some of this out. And the newer translations, because the text is corrupted, it uses a critical Greek text that pulls this out. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. Spirit, Holy Spirit, the water. There are three that bear witness. It's what they're speaking. They're speaking the same thing. There are three that bear witness on earth. The Spirit, the Spirit of Sonship, says, you are my son. 
comes into our heart crying, Abba, Father. Spirit, the water, the Father's voice, as John said, is this uh, the sound of many waters. As Jesus came up out of the water, the voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Spirit, the water, and the blood, the blood of the Son that speaks better things. It says, You are a Son. They all witness the same thing. You are a son. There are three that bear witness on earth. Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. If you receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. This is who you are. The commandments was speaking it. The statues was speaking it. The testimonies were speaking it. So back to Psalm 19. This closing verse that so many are familiar with. David, in the context of the heavens declaring the glory of God, this redemptive plan, the bridegroom coming out of his chamber, rejoicing at the strong man from the ends of heaven and the circuit unto it to complete this redemptive plan, to bring them back into I am. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. that I may be innocent of the great transgression, to love the God, Lord your God with all your heart. I am with all your heart, the Spirit, with all your soul, the Father, with all your strength, your body, the Son. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, this is the Davidic new creation prayer. Let the words of my mouth, this is a prayer and the meditation of my heart. This, these, ex, the acceptable prayer and meditation is coming back into sonship, coming into agreement with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, saying their witness, you are a son. Now we need you to come into agreement with that so that we may have one, 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 If you're seeing 11, 11, it's because that's us coming into the Godhead. Let the words of your mouth, your prayer, this acceptable prayer of coming into agreement with this sonship. I am a son. My sins have been removed as far as the east is from the west. His blood speaks better things. His blood says, I'm a son. I come into agreement with that. This is the prayer, the acceptable prayer he's talking about. This new creation prayer. His mercies are new every day. They're all speaking it. Will we come into agreement with it? This is what must happen for us to enter into the new creation reality. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. You got to believe it. You got to come into agreement with that. The old is past. Behold, behold the new. Behold the Son. Behold yourself in me. Put away the lie. The world keeps speaking a lie. The religion, religion speaks a lie. You've got to do something. You've got to do something. No. When we were enemies in our minds, Colossians 1.21, has he reconciled us? When we were enemies in our minds, yet now hath he reconciled us. To 
through the body of his death. It's just his love, his mercy that's new every day. You're forgiven. Will you walk in that mercy? Will you walk in that light? This light of righteousness, you are forgiven. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, Isaiah 62, 1. Until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness. I am forgiven. You are forgiven. Walk in that light. Sit down. And you who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the children of disobedience, among whom else we all had our conduct in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the will of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as, but God, who is rich in mercy, forgiveness, first love. For his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together and made us alive together. Has quickened us together and made us sit together in heavenly places at the mercy seat. In Christ Jesus. You are accepted in the beloved. Will you walk in that light? Or will you allow the snare of the fowler to come? Oh no, you need to do something. Or will you become ensnared by your own words? No, I'm a son. I'm forgiven. I have the mind of Christ. I walk just as he walked. I see as he sees. I love as he loves. Will we come into agreement with that? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. David said in Psalm 63, I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. What's under the shadow of his wings? The mercy seat. What was David thinking about? The cross. Therefore, under the shadow of your wings, at the chuppah, in the Father's house, coming back full circle. In the shadow of your wings, at the mercy seat, the shadow of the wings that are over the Ark of the Covenant, over the mercy seat, and the testimonies, the truth, mercy and truth meeting. Or mercy, our sins are forgiven, and the truth of who we are is This is what David is joining these two things, mercy and truth together. I am forgiven and I will stand in the truth. This is the prayer. Let the words of my mouth be truth. The truth which is in Jesus. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. As David said in Psalm 16, I have set the Lord always before my face. He is at my right hand. He's speaking of the cross the mercy. I am forgiven. David is joining the two altars, the brazen altar of the cross. He does this in Psalm 141, verse 2. He says, let my prayer be set forth before you as incense the words of my mouth be acceptable. Let my words be set forth before you as incense. Where's this golden altar of incense? It's before the second veil, before to come into oneness, to come in behind the veil, come under the seraphim's wing, the cherubim's wings, under the shadow of his wings, where is the mercy seat and the truth under it, the testimonies. It's this prayer 
this Davidic new creation prayer that brings us back into the chuppah, back into the Father's house. Psalm 141, verse 2, David says, Let my prayer be set forth before you as incense, and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. He specifically said evening sacrifice because that's when Jesus hung on the cross and said it's finished. As the lamb slain. Why, why is he joining the two? These two altars, the brazen altar where the evening sacrifice, the lamb was slain. Because my sins are forgiven and are forgiven. Now, let the words of my mouth come into agreement with this new creation reality. Let this be my prayer. Let it ascend before you, Father. In faith, I thank you that it's finished. My sins are removed as far as from the east as from the west. If many man is in Christ, abiding in his mercy, in his forgiveness, he is a new creation. The old has passed. Behold the new. Behold the truth which is in Jesus. Or continually to join these two. Let my prayer be set forth before you as incense and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice and thanksgiving that he paid the price that is done. My sins are forgiven. Now I come into agreement with the truth. This is Isaiah chapter 51, verse 16. I have put my words in your mouth. These acceptable words. This prayer that rises this incense, that comes into agreement with sonship, comes into agreement with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are saying that agree as one, that witness as one. You are a son. You are a son. You are a son. Isaiah 51, 16 says, I have put my words in your mouth and covered you with the shadow of my hand, the protection of my hand. That's the Father's left hand of mercy. He says, you're under my mercy. Your forgiveness. You're forgiven. That's what David was speaking of when, when he said, he laid his hand upon me. You're my son. You're forgiven. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Isaiah 51, 16, I have put my words in your mouth and I've covered you with the shadow of my hand. You're forgiven. Speak the words. Come into agreement with our testimony, with, with our witness. And we will be one. My grace will be there to transform you, to bring you into the new creation reality, to walk it out but you must come into agreement and this covenant is consummated there. This is the Ark of the Covenant where mercy and truth meet, where the forgiveness and the truth meet. The truth is what is spoken in covenant. It's the covenant promise of we'll be one. But we have to speak it. We are one. This is who I am. I put away the old through your mercy, through your forgiveness, and I come into agreement with the truth. This is how we're transformed, transfigured. 
Listen to Isaiah 51, 16. I have put my words in your mouth and I've covered you with the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens. See it in heavenly places in his mercy that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundation of the earth. The truth. That I may plant the heavens and lay the foundation of the earth and say unto Zion, you are my people. Those who have ascended Zion. Those who have clean hands. Why do they have clean hands? Because they passed through the brazen altar, the cross, and they came to the brazen laver and they washed their hands in innocency. Clean hands, a pure heart, because they're allowing the light of truth to shine into their heart in the holy place. The Holy Spirit saying, you are a son, you are a son, receive it. Clean hands, a pure heart, who have not lifted their soul up unto vanity. The pride of life, religion, that you have to do something Not lift his soul up to vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, according to a lie. Oh, I'm no good. Oh, I'm. There's, there's swearing deceitfully. See, see, there's a covenant made with the enemy there. He goes, oh, okay, you just came into agreement with me. No. Our words are acceptable. Let them rise as incense come into agreement with the truth. Hear what Isaiah 57, 16 says. These, these are all leading up to Isaiah 60. What's Isaiah 60? Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. These are people that have entered into union. This is all preceding this, this to come into union. Isaiah 57, 16. I create the fruit of the lips. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to them who are far off. As Janet Lynn would say, peace is restoring chaos. Godly order out of chaos. The chaos of our fallen life. I create the fruit of the lips, the Father says. Speak it forth. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Speak it forth. That your life would be planted in the new creation reality. That you may be planted into the heavenlies. That I may plant the heavens. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to them who are far off and to them who are near. And I will Heal them. But the wicked are not so. It says, their waters stir up mire and dirt. Speaking of their words, their thoughts, they're stirring up mire and dirt. The carnal nature. Because they're coming into agreement with that. There is no rest, saith the Lord, to the wicked. No! No! I create the fruit of the lips. Come into agreement with my eternal word, my witness. There are three that bear witness on earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And they all three agree as one. You are a son. You know, this is the prayer of John 15, 7. If you abide in me, Jesus said, in my mercy, in my forgiveness, in my righteousness, and my word, my truth abides in you. You believe it. You shall ask what you will. It shall be done unto you. What, what's he saying? Is he saying you can just pray anything and get it? No, he's talking about this prayer of transformation. 
to come into the new creation reality. He's speaking to his disciples that laid everything down. They weren't like carnal people. They, they, they were fishing and he said, come follow me. And they just dropped their nets and followed him. What were, the, what were these guys' hearts after? The Lord. They wanted, they were after him in union. Ask my father that your joy, so that he will answer it and your joy may be full. Where's the fullness of joy? It's in this union. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. The acceptable words. The prayer that is as an incense. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. You shall be transfigured into our image and likeness. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. If you keep my commandments, you abide in my love. The commandments to abide in me, in my mercy, in my forgiveness. And my words, the truth, abide in you. If you keep my commandments, you abide in my love, as I have kept my Father. Because why? Because when you abide in his mercy and truth, you are rooted and grounded in love. You are rooted in that forgiveness. And you're grounded in the truth of who you are. If you keep my commandments, you abide in my love, as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. As Jesus said, as, fa as thou, Father, art in me and I in you. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full, that you would enter into union with us. Father, I thank you for this great goodness which you have laid up for those that fear you, which you have wrought for those that trust in you, before the sons of men. We trust your word. Your testimony. Your witness. You shall hide them in the secret of your presence. The secret of your face where mercy and truth meet. As it says in Psalm 89 verse 14. Mercy and truth shall go before your face. Where we receive the forgiveness and we speak forth and pray the truth. That it shall be done unto us. New creation reality. Righteous and holy before the Father. You shall hide them in the secret of your face from the pride of man. By their own religious doings. From the pride of man, you shall keep them secretly in a pavilion. <laughs> the hope of, from the strife of tongues. What keeps you from the strife of tongues? Your words coming into agreement with that covenant, that truth. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we love you. We pass through the way, the truth, the life into oneness with you. We thank you that it is finished. We come into agreement with all you have spoken of who you say we are. I thank you for sealing this word into the hearts and minds of your people. In a place of simplicity, may our prayer be set forth before you as incense and the lifting of our hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, over my mouth. As David said, Psalm 141, verse three. Set a watch, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. 
Set a watch, O oh Lord, over our mouth. May we not speak, come into agreement with anything of the enemy. Keep the door of my lips. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. The door of your lips, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. What are these gates? The gates of Zion are praise. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 18, it's praising him for the work of the cross, for the mercy that your sins are forgiven. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, the door of your lips, and the King of glory shall come in, being transfigured from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Shalom, shalom.